All right, good evening, Himalaya. It is the first week of April, and as Lisa shared, it's the one year anniversary since we started these English Himalaya Zoom calls. I am thrilled to be here, to be back here with all of you again. <clears throat> and for those that I have not had the pleasure of meeting, um, my name is Paul Park from Las Vegas. And before I start today's call, I'd like to ask all of you a question. How many of you have ever dreamed about just waking up one day and quitting your job, okay? Prior to New Skin, I had a background in finance and was working hard at my job throughout my 20s. It was great in the beginning, but when the Great Recession hit in 2007, I was in my late 20s and my work stress increased like crazy to the point where I wanted to quit my job every single week. You know, when you deal with money in your company and the economy is good, things are great. Everyone is so friendly and, and you know, you love working. But during a recession, man, it is tough. Imagine being at work in your office and every time the phone rings, you know it's going to be an unpleasant conversation. That is the stress that caused me to get burned out really quick. And after I turned 30, I started to really ask myself, do I need to live like this for the next 30 to 40 years of my life? Living paycheck to paycheck at a job with no end in sight? Has anyone here ever felt like that before? You know, I'm sure many have. You know, more than anything, I wanted freedom. The freedom to not have to get permission for a vacation or having my boss tell me what I'm worth through my salary. So at 30 years old, I quit my job. I went all in with New Skin. And this year I'll be 42. And I can honestly say that thanks to New Skin, you know, New Skin has freed me from my previous life and I'm finally able to live life on my terms. Success in our business will require all of you to learn a lot. So I really commend you all on being here this week and every week on these weekly training calls. I realized that it hasn't been that long since I last spoke. It was just one month ago that I did a system sales training and talked a lot about the pipeline and the actions that we need to be successful in this business. Right? I talked about the four things that we need to do to earn money in NewSkin, the importance of consistently talking to people and putting them in the pipeline so we can create more customers and sales partners. I also talked about how to close a new customer or partner by asking what their level of interest is on the closing scale and finding out where the prospect's interest level is. Being able to close effectively is important in sales, no matter what industry you're in. But it's impossible to close someone if they're not open to learning more about new skin. So I was really struggling with what to talk to you guys about tonight because it's only been a short month since I last shared with you. So as I was thinking about what I could share, I realized that it's really important for us to engage people and open them up. You can only close someone after you've opened them up, right? So um, I love using the comparison of when we talk to people about new skin, they have to have an empty cup. Right? So the way the analogy goes is imagine that there is a cup full of water and that water is full to, that cup is full of water to the max, okay? And if I were to pour more water into that cup, what would happen to that water? It would spill out and overflow, right? So what we need to do is empty out the other cup, pour all the water out, and then we can put our good water in. And, um, you know, when we, talk to people, that's exactly what we need to do. We need them to open up. We need them to empty their cup. And only when they're open can we put our message and our story in there. The only way that you can succeed in this business is by becoming an expert in network marketing. Okay, So of course, that's going to take time. You know, Nobody's an expert in any industry, in any job, in any profession from the beginning. It takes time. It takes a lot of learning. And specifically in our industry, one reason that I love it so much is because the skills that we develop here when it comes to sales, communication, um, leadership, 
These are skill sets that we can take into any other industry, into any other profession, right? We are actually not just learning how to build a new skin business. We are learning the fundamentals of success in any business. Okay? So what differentiates a great marketer versus an average marketer? And I believe personally that it's their ability to use the power of storytelling. Marketing is nothing more than being able to tell a story that can connect with the person that you are talking to. So what do you need to learn to become a great storyteller? Your goal when you tell a story is to get the audience to relive the story with you. And there are three things or three ways to bring your audience into the story so that they can experience it with you. And the first thing you need to do is to create curiosity. Curiosity is a storyteller's best friend. And creating curiosity is so important when we want to invite someone to take a closer look at Newskin. When you think of any movie trailer, what do they do? It creates curiosity. Even when you're watching a movie, the opening scene will create curiosity as it goes into the body of the movie, right? So there's always some level of curiosity that's always being presented and shared with the audience in any type of story that's being told. So um, why is curiosity so important? The reason curiosity is so important when sharing your story is because truthfully, nobody cares about your story or what you have to say, right? That's the truth. Your friends, your parents, your family, they don't care about you sharing your story unless they're interested, unless they're curious. So if you go up to someone and say, hey, let me tell you my story. Let me tell you the story about new skin. In the back of their mind, they're probably thinking, what the heck do I care? I never asked to hear your story. I never asked to hear the story of your company, new skin. And it's just natural for people to think like that. So what I need to do is instead of turning people off with my story, I need to pique their interest to bring them into my story. I need to really attract them into the story that I want to share with them. So what's a good way to do that? Before I start a story, I want to ask a you-focused question in the front end of my story, okay? So for those of you that don't know, what's a you-focused question? It's simply a question with the word you in it, where I'm asking them something. An example would be, have you ever experienced this before? I actually did this in the very beginning of this call. When I asked all of you, have you ever dreamed about waking up and quitting your job, right? I purposely put that in the beginning of my story because as I asked you guys that question, you guys were probably thinking, yeah, you know, I have thought about that. You know, so I did that to pique your interest so you'll be curious and care about what I have to say next, okay? Everything is bringing people along the line step by step. So the technique is this. I'm going to tap into your world with a you question first, and then I'm going to bring you into my world with my story, okay? Simple enough? So the next thing you want to do as you share your story is you want to place them in this scene, okay? So you can do this by simply saying something like, imagine being here, or if you had been there, you want the people listening to your story to kind of relive the story in their mind, to recreate that story in their mind. And I don't know, I don't, and again, I did this in the beginning of this call, and I don't know if you guys caught it, but when I was sharing my story, about how I was working at my job. And after the great recession, you know, things were getting tougher and more stressful at my job. And I made this statement, imagine being at work in your office and every time the phone rings, you know, it's gonna be an unpleasant conversation. I was trying to bring you guys into my office setting, sitting at my desk where the phone rings and I, where you can feel the dread that I was feeling. Oh, who is calling me now? Who am I gonna have an unpleasant conversation with now? And the more that you can do that to place people in that setting, the better 
your story will be. When you place them in this scene like that, they will start to really recreate their story in their mind and put themselves in your shoes. Okay? And when they can put themselves in your shoes, then you will have created relatability. And that's actually what the next thing you want to work on is relatability. Relatability is when the audience is able to follow along with you and they can relate with your personal experience, with the experience that you're trying to share in that story. And this is very easy to do. You do this by asking things like, have you felt like that too? Has this happened to you before? You know, has this happened to you also? You know, this is a conversational technique to keep the audience focused and engaged, right? These three things will get the person or audience to really engage in your story. It will help you make a deeper connection with the person that you're talking to. And if you look at all the things that we're doing on these three steps, we're really just asking the right questions, right? All of these things are kind of asking questions and asking people to imagine themselves being at the scene of the story I'm sharing. Asking them if they've ever felt this way. Asking the right questions is one of the best keys to communication, the best ways to open up a prospect in our business. You know, like whenever I talk to someone about new skin, when I wanna share our product or our business with people, 90% of it, I'm not talking at all. 90% of the time I'm listening to them because I need to really open them up. And when people start to share, right? That's when they're opening up. When I was making that analogy with the cup earlier, how do we empty their cup? We empty their cup by having them share all of their information, how things are going in their life, how things are going with their family, how things are going with their health, their beauty. You know, like, are they happy? Are they going on vacations? What are they doing for fun? The more knowledge that you have about your prospect, the more powerful story that you can share with them and bring them along the journey to really show them what they need in MuseCam. So um, again, you know, these little details, you know, as I was sharing my story, you know, to just throw in that extra sentence, to throw in that extra comment and question, it's a very minor detail, but I promise you, these little things will produce very powerful results. So what makes an influential story? Well, every single influential story follows a very specific blueprint. And the blueprint is this, the model of the story is struggle to solution. That's it, right? It sounds so simple, right? Okay, you wanna tell a story, you set it up with the struggle and you lead them to the solution. And that's what makes any good book, it's what makes any good story that I tell, it's what makes any good movie, right? And here's how it works. You hook people in, you attract their attention with the struggle, and then you help them with the solution. You know, there is something in our body, in our DNA, where we respond to struggle, where we respond to conflict and challenge. You know, it naturally engages us. It's human nature, and it's really kind of weird. You know, why is it that we're really interested in conflict and struggle and challenges? Right? It's just something that interests our minds. And I think that's why, you know, when we turn on the TV, when we look at the newspaper, a lot of the news is negative. It talks about people struggling. It talks about people's difficulties and challenges. It talks about the conflicts that's going on. You turn on the news today, especially, that's all we'll see. And why would the news choose to broadcast all of that hardship and negativity versus all the positivity. And the reason for that is when we just share the feel good stories, when we share just you know, people being happy and living a wonderful life, for some reason it doesn't engage people. And when it comes to the TV news, they need to get ratings. They need people to watch their program for 30 minutes or one hour. And they know that people respond to that struggle. They know people respond to those challenges. So, you know, that's something that we really need to remember, okay? I'm sure many of you um, have heard about the movie Minari, 
okay? Um, it's a movie that came out several months ago. And, you know, it's the story of a Korean immigrant family. It's won, you know, so many awards. And, you know, I want all of you to imagine going to the movie theater. You are super excited to watch this movie because it's won the Golden Globe Awards. It's won the Critics' Choice Awards. And so many of the actors have all won, you know, Best Actor, Best Actress Awards. So you're super excited to see this movie. You walk into the movie theater, you go to the concession stand, buy all the treats and goodies that you want. You sit down in your chair, you have popcorn in one hand and you're drinking the other. You see how I just placed you in this scene of this story? Okay, anyways, let's say in this version of the movie, the family moves from California to Arkansas for a better life. They start their farm. The harvest is fresh and their farm business takes off. They are getting customers from all over the country and they become so successful and they live life happily ever after. The end. No ups or downs, no challenges and no struggles. If we saw that movie, I bet we would come out of that theater thinking, man, what a terrible movie that was. What a waste of time that was. And here's the problem. In business, that's how most people tell stories. We tell stories as solution to solution stories. And that's why most business stories all sound the same, right? When we think of how people talk about, especially in our industry, they talk about their partner company, they just say all of the positive things. They just say solution to solution. We're the best, right? And most people are like this. You know what? Our company, New Skin, is great. We've always been great. We'll always be great. And if you work with us, that will be great, right? And that's what we do a lot of the times. Of course, not in those exact words, right? But what does the person that's listening to that think? What do most people react? They're like, uh, great, bye, right? And then they leave, right? And the reason for that is when you say things like that, new skin is great, we've always been great, we'll always be great, it will be great if you joined, right? They're thinking, what's real about that? It just sounds like some kind of pitch, right? It just sounds like some kind of marketing slogan or, or just, you know, where you're just talking about all of the good, none of the bad, you know, new skin slogan, right? So it's no different than saying, like calling up one of your close friends, right? So you're, you're, you start a new skin, you call up your friend and you say, hey, new skin is amazing. And I'm gonna build a big global business and I'll never have to worry about money or time again. Wanna do this with me? And this friend that you just called knows that for the past couple of years, you've been burnt out from your job, you've been struggling with your finances, that your quality of life has not been that happy. And knowing that, they're going to think, wait, something doesn't add up here. Where is this coming from? Is Paul out of his mind? Right? That's what people are going to think when we only talk about solution to solution. So you need to be real when you share your story. A real story where you'll talk about struggle to solution. And let's say you call up that same friend, okay? You call him up and you say, hey, can I have a real conversation with you? I don't know if you ever think about this, but you know, I think about it a lot. We've been friends for a long time and you know me pretty well. I've been at my job in finance for seven years and the truth is I'm so burnt out. I've always been looking for something that can really change my life and give me freedom, freedom to vacation where I want, when I want, to buy the car I want and to just live my life free. Do you ever think about that too, right? And that is how I talk. That is the story that I'm gonna share with them. And as you engage that friend or as you engage that prospect around the real struggle, then you say, you know, I think I found something that has the potential to give me the life that I want. And I'd love for you to take a look and tell me what you think. How do you think that friend is gonna respond? Do you think that that friend is gonna think, hey, something doesn't add up here or that Paul is out of his mind? 
No, because I shared that struggle, that friend is actually going to want to learn more about the opportunity that you're talking about. And of course, I'm talking about this in the business sense, but this also works when we're talking about product, right? When we're talking about our skin, our health, our beauty, right? People all have some sort of struggle or have experienced some type of struggle that they can relate to. So um, just a couple of days ago, Lisa and I were like, all right, let's make our hot summer bodies. So we started TR90 two days ago. Well, really hardcore, right? We've always been taking the shakes and doing the pills, but we started to really focus on losing weight and having that beach body, right? So even when we're talking about the products, and I actually have one of my friends from New York, one of my childhood friends, who's doing the TR90 with us. So, you know, even when I was talking to him, we were sharing, talking about the struggle. You know, it was like, yeah, every year it seems that, you know, during the holidays, we gain weight and we always struggle with this weight loss. And so many people have these problems with these yo-yo diets. And, you know, we've tried going to the gym, we've tried doing this, we've tried doing that. And, you know, I found that most of the, the best sustainable way to keep and maintain my body weight is the TR90 program. Right? I don't want to get thin in three months and balloon back and yo-yo back up in the next, in the next six months. You know? So a long-term fix, a long-term solution I found is the TR90 because the supplements help to control my moods, my cravings, to help regulate my metabolism. And I share all of the solutions that our product offers. The struggle is real, right? Everybody goes through that. And it could be with health and it could be with anything, right? So on the product side, it's really the same thing. This storytelling tips is really the same thing. Our products solve struggles. They solve problems. That's why the products are so great. That's why they sell so well around the world, right? So as you go out there and share your story to people, remember that our business exists to solve struggle. Our products exist to solve problems. So if you can develop the skill to tell a story from struggle to solution really well, then you will see results. Right? Remember that if your struggle is relatable, then your solution becomes credible, right? If I talk about how I'm so burnt out from my job, how I was struggling to live a free life, how I want freedom and how I want to live the term life on my terms and the person I'm talking to relates with me. They're like, you know what? Me too, Paul. I feel like that too. I felt like that for the past 10 years also. And they all of a sudden are relating and aligned with where I was then whatever solution I give them is going to be credible to them. Because if both of us had the same problem, right? And I found the solution to that problem and it worked for me, why wouldn't it work for them? So of course, it's going to lend credibility to them. There's a balance between relatability and credibility, right? So um, if you engage people through your story, they're going to be like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. I want to try it or I wanna move forward with the opportunity. And this is the skill that we really need to develop to be successful network marketers. And no one is born knowing this. You know, I wasn't born knowing this. I learned all of this when I started my new skin journey. You know, in college, they didn't teach this. My seven years at my job, I was more focused on the numbers. It wasn't about telling stories. It wasn't about communicating effectively, asking the right questions and responding correctly. Right? This is a skill that we need to develop. And um, you know, we learn it, we practice it, and then we practice it some more until we master it. That's the journey of new skin, right? And that's what makes this business so great because all of us are learning this. You know, if you're new to the business, you're learning this for the first time. And you don't have to try to figure out all the answers on your own because the answers are out there. Right? And you have sponsors, you have uplines, you have mentors that are going to teach you everything that you need to know, as long as you have the willingness to learn it. 
you know, success in our business requires us to have a growth mindset. And that means that we need to keep on learning. Right? Stories, trainings, lectures, presentations, they do not need to be long. This is actually the last slide of my presentation, right? And I wanted to make it where my message came across so simple, so short, and so, and so like sharp, where it's like, okay, I get it. And now all that's left is for you guys to just practice it. When me and Lisa first started the New Skin business, we went on a lot of trainings. And one of the trainings was writing our story. Every single time that you talk to somebody about New Skin, every single prospect that you're going to call up, you're going to need to give them a story. So one of the training camps that we went to was actually with um, the Vietnamese leaders. There was a two-day workshop where we literally sat down for 30 minutes and we needed to write down a two-minute story on paper. And for the next hour, we practiced rehearsing it over and over. And there was a guideline to the story, what you did before New Skin, you know, why you decided to take a look in New Skin, what you're going to achieve through New Skin. And there was this template that we just needed to answer these questions, put it on paper, and just practice saying it out. If you're new to this business, I encourage you to do that because this pitch is going to be the same. For those of you that have um, known Lisa and I for a while, every BOM that I give, my story hasn't changed at all. I have it memorized, not just in English, but also in Korean, right? And every BOM, the first five minutes of my story starts out identical, word for word, like it's a script. Last month at my training, I shared with all of you, if you want to invite effectively, present effectively, or just communicate effectively, you need to work off a script, right? Even my entire training tonight was scripted. And I wrote it out and, that, and I practiced it. And that's why I was able to just kind of go off script and look at the camera and just talk to all of you the way I am now. You know, to be completely transparent and honest, all of the content tonight, all the content was from lessons that I learned from the books and videos of a single new skin leader who I really admire. And I don't know if you guys will know this name. For the people who've been in the business for a while, you'll know this name. His name is Ty Bennett. Okay? And um, he's a best-selling author. And he's a very well-known speaker on the topic of sales and leadership. And he trains sales leaders from top companies in all industries. You know, from Berkshire Hathaway to Coca-Cola to Progressive to Remax to all of the top companies that you can think of in this country. When those companies do a sales training, they're like, who can we invite to be our keynote speaker? They choose Ty Bennett. And I bought his books years ago and I've read them multiple times. And for those of you that are interested, you know, these are the two books that he's written, you know, the power of storytelling, which is the topic of this very training, right? And the other book that I have at home is The Power of Influence. You, know, you can see how worn these books are because whenever I'm thinking of, all right, what can I share with my partners? You know, what is a training that they really need? It always seems to come back to this because in our business, we need to be able to communicate well. We need to influence people to take action. And these two story titles, it's so simple, isn't it? You know, as you know, I was contemplating what to share with all of you tonight, I, for the past couple of days, I was watching, you know, a bunch of videos from Jeff Mack to, you know, a lot of the, you know, uh, leaders that I admire, a lot of the leaders that really have an impact on me, right? And I came across, uh, I searched Ty Bennett's videos again, and he had this short video and I liked this video so much that I literally typed out every single word that he said so that I wouldn't leave out a single detail on this training tonight on storytelling. Everything that he talks about from curiosity to placing them in this scene to creating re relatability, those words are literally his words. 95% of all the things that you heard tonight are his exact words and I'm just passing them along to you. That's what 
are new skin businesses. Right? I think the 5% that I kind of improv improv on was the, Mina, the Minari story, right? And my personal story. Other than that, all of those words are lessons from Thai. This business is about duplication and the lessons need to duplicate. The trainings need to duplicate. And I don't think that I could have worded it in a better way than he words it because he's a professional speaker. So what did I do? I just literally duplicated his YouTube video. And I would have loved to have him on the Zoom call so that I wouldn't have to say it word for word. Of course, it would be so much more powerful if he said it, but it doesn't matter as long as you guys are getting that message. And, you know, I share this with all of you because again, all the tools and skills that we need to succeed in new skin is already out there. That's why we always hear the successful leader say, success leaves clues. You know, the clues are in this book. The clues are in the videos and in all the success stories and trainings that we hear from the leaders before us. So what you guys need to do, you just need to seek it out. So keep on learning and growing and let's have a great month of April and let's really blow it up this year. Thank you everyone for your time.